Hey everybody, I'm finally back. I know it's been um it's been a little while since I made a video. Sorry, I got a little wrapped up in home time and uh helping take care of my mom after the surgery plus moving into my new apartment and all that fun stuff while I was home. Um but I'm finally back out here on the road. Um I had a couple of uh a couple of y'all asked questions that um Somebody literally just asked a question like 45 minutes ago for me filming this video. Before I started filming this video, um, I just was going through the comments on YouTube Studio and saw it. And then somebody asked me a question about a week ago um, that I uh, said I would make a video on. And um, sorry for the delay. I kind of I kind of forgot um, and just got wrapped up in home time. Um, so I'm going to answer that. So the first question, the one that was asked about a week ago, was um, from somebody who's at Prime on TNT on the uh, Reefer side, and he was asking what, um, how did I adjust to coming straight out of, oh there's the comment, um, how did I adjust coming straight out of TNT and going straight to lease? Um, it, is, it is a heck of an adjustment coming off of making I think, I don't remember, 14 cents a mile or 700 bucks a week, so all of a sudden you're responsible for everything. You don't run any loads, like I didn't run any loads last week, and I think I ended up, since I went a full pay period without running any loads with how long I was home, I went, I owed Prime a little over $1,300 was what it, was my fixed cost on this truck for the week between truck payment, uh, APU payment, um, my insurances, I'm still paying off the flatbed equipment and all the other little random things that they charge me for. I mean, the paycheck breakdown for a lease operator is usually for me about eight or nine pages long. Even not doing anything for a week, it was still five pages long worth of credits and charges and just the breakdown of how much I've made so far this year gross versus how much I made net and all that fun stuff. But coming straight out, it is, it is a heck of a um, heck of an adjustment. I mean, you have to set that. You do have to be ready to run like crazy. I don't know if all the fleet managers are the same. My fleet manager seemed to. I mean, she takes great care of me. When I first went out solo, she kind of kept me closer into Springfield until I uh, my first couple loads. I ran from Springfield down to. I think it was, I think I went Springfield to Dallas, back to Springfield, and then I was, that was right before Christmas, and I was going home for Christmas, so I then went from Springfield all the way out to, where the heck did I go? Southern Georgia, and then Georgia to Virginia, back down to Georgia again, um, where my first loads, but most of my runs in the beginning running lease. I mean, I made good money doing it. Um, I make more money now that she's very confident as to what I'm able to do. Um, and that I know what I'm doing. I'm safe and all that fun stuff. Um, but at first my runs were shorter runs, kind of pick up one day, drop the next day. Um, which there are a lot of flatbed loads like that. Um, I'm sure on the reefer side, I'm not positive about that, but I'm sure most of y'all's loads are probably pick up one day, drop the next day. But I've also started getting loads where I picked up a load in Virginia and dropped it off just outside of Portland, Oregon, which I think typically is a team load, but um, I ran it out there by myself. Took a week, um, took a solid week to get all the way across the country um, in the truck. Um, but I mean, I started getting to do longer loads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and let me grab the iPad so I can actually read the comment and make sure I'm answering all of it. I'll be right back. I'm not going to pause the video while I uh, grab the iPad because I really don't feel like editing the video. Um, I'm literally just going to post this and have it post probably while I'm in the shower. Um, uh oh, Chris Superspeed777 asked me two questions now. All right. Um, so I'm getting questions as I film this video and I will answer them while I'm filming this video. Um, let me see if they've put them in yet. Okay. 
I'm also waiting for a load while I'm doing this. Um, how do I find comments just on the regular one? Uh, my channel. I'm so used to using YouTube Studio that I don't... Um, Now I'm gonna cut it real quick, I'll be right back. All right, so to y'all that was literally like that. To me that was about 10 minutes of waiting for my iPad to download YouTube Studio. So this is what I'm looking at for y'all's comments to see what y'all's comments and everything are. So the video, wrapping up TNT with Prime on the reefer side. Adjusting to being the lease driver straight out of training. What are some tips on maximizing your time and revenue being a lease driver, leaning on going lease once to wrap up with training? So, I mean, the biggest tip for maximizing revenue is um, you just gotta make, as cliche as it may sound, you gotta make good use of your time. Um, run as much as you can, um, but you also have to balance your clock because doing a 34, well, I love doing 34 hour breaks because it's basically, it's a day off otherwise I'm running seven days a week um, and you will have to do 34s eventually no matter what I've gotten to the point now where I'm doing longer runs so I typically do a 34 almost every week and now um, I mean I won't do one this weekend because I just got back out on the road a couple days ago so I've still got plenty of time left but um, basically you got to maximize your time that way you can get more loads um, because obviously the more loads you get, the more money you're going to make. Um, also, maximizing the revenue, something that you'll have to go to ACE2 class and they will emphasize slow down, save fuel. You're going to get there no matter whether you're doing 65 because the lease trucks do 65 versus the 58 and 62 um, of the company trucks. Slow down, save fuel and all that. I'm terrible at that. Um, I run 65 anytime I can. Um, I like just knocking the miles out and primarily because truck stops can fill up, start to fill up. I mean it's, what time is it right now? It's 5.30 right now. The truck stop I'm at is out in the middle of nowhere so it's not getting too full yet. It should start filling up pretty quick because the fuel islands are backed up like two or three trucks deep and most of them are probably going to come in here and park once they're done. Um, but I mean, maximizing revenue, if I were to slow down and drive 55, 58 instead of 65, um, I would save a lot more money on fuel. I mean, even driving the speed I do, I get, I've averaged since I've had this truck, I've put 74,000 miles on it and I've averaged 7.7 .7 miles per gallon. Um, which really isn't bad because, I mean, on the flatbed side, I mean, the load I had on, I'm empty right now. I'm heading out to pick up a load right now, well, in the morning. Um, the load I had on before this was 48,000 pounds. With full fuel, I weighed just under 80,000 pounds. And a lot of time flatbed, you're sitting right on the edge of 80,000 pounds. Not sure on the reefer side whether or not y'all tend to be really close to 80,000 pounds or if y'all are typically going to be hauling 20 or 30,000 pounds of stuff put you down in the 50 to 60, 50, 60, 70,000 pound range because at that point it's going to save more fuel too. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, you just have to maximize your time. I do that by driving 65 as often as I can. Um, that's how I maximize my time. I try to get the max distance per the amount of time that I'm on the road And then you just have to keep on running I mean a lot of lease drivers since we make our own schedule We can go home whenever we want to go home a lot of lease drivers go home pretty often. I go home every two or three months um, Typically for a couple of days this time I was went home for a little more than a week and then six weeks from now, the week, um, the last week of August and into the beginning of September, I'm going to the beach for a week. I'm actually gonna have my true vacation. But typically, most of the time, I go home for 
let's say two to four days and I'm out on the road two to three months um, just constantly running loads and all that um, I mean I I had two trainers my first trainer was company my second trainer was lease I looked at the money difference and on a really good week a lease driver makes a heck of a lot more than a company driver on a really bad week a company driver makes a heck of a lot more than a lease driver um, would I recommend going lease straight out of training now that I've done it um, yeah I would I mean is it more challenging yes you're completely responsible for your own income um, you have to manage your own time and when stuff breaks sometimes you're gonna have to pay for it sometimes it's covered but no matter what even if it's covered by warranty you're gonna end up paying for it anyways because of the downtime you're not paid for your downtime unless it's excessive downtime um, which kind of gets into the question that um, Chris super 777 one of his questions that he asked me um, and Chris, you actually asked me this question while I'm filming this video, so you're getting as close to a live response as you can right now. Um, as a lease driver, do you have to pay for broken parts of the truck? Example, air compressor, pressure sensors, gauges, etc. Um, he's interested in going flatbed with Prime. Um, air, most of the parts on the truck, no. Um, engine components, stuff like that, you're not going to have to pay for out of pocket. Um, Prime tends to get rid of the trucks when they get out of warranty, but the warranty on these things is absolutely ridiculous with how long it lasts. Um, so most of it's going to be covered by warranty. You will, I mean, I've had to do one warranty repair on this one. My fuel injector went out and started, I don't think I posted the video of all the issues I've had with this truck. I filmed a video, but I was, I don't know if I'll post that video. I might refilm that video now that I'm in a better mood than I was when I filmed that video. Um, wasn't a very nice video. Um, I had a fuel injector go out on the truck and it was still injecting fuel but the injectors on these trucks are actually cooled using the antifreeze that circulates through the engine because of I mean it's a 15 liter engine that's being run at full throttle pretty much all the time. The injectors need to be kept cool. Um, so not only was it injecting fuel but it was also injecting coolant into the number two cylinder I believe it was so it cut the power in the truck in half I mean it ran for another thousand miles without actually damaging the engine but it cut my power in half which was not fun I was down for a full week while they ordered that injector and put it in I guess it was a really rare injector or something I'm not sure I had to get it fixed outside of prime at a uh, an outside company um, just with something that complicated they decided they wanted somebody that they want a Freightliner to do it um, but while yes I did get compensated for that I think I got like six or seven hundred bucks which came out to a hundred dollars a day I had to pay for my hotel room and all that stuff while I was down hotel room food the fact that I wasn't running loads so six or seven hundred bucks when as I said my fixed cost when I'm home and I haven't burned any fuel or anything is thirteen hundred I ended up losing over seven hundred dollars I owed Prime that week just because I couldn't run. I didn't make any, I didn't have any income aside from what they paid me for the warranty for being down for so long. Um, so for the most part, no, you don't have to pay for stuff like that. When it breaks on the truck out of pocket, you pay in time um, instead. Um, and then he also asked, how long were you on the road for in the TNT phase? Uh, TNT phase, I started... Granted, I got into it during the holiday season. Um, TNT took me, I started at the end of September. Um, I got my license September 25th. And I got this truck a week and a half before Christmas. So basically October. November. I took a week off in November for Thanksgiving. Um, intended to take a couple days. Ended up getting the full week off. Um, so, I mean, all in all, I was actually out on the road for probably two to three months. Um, some people it does indeed take three to four months. Um, it all just depends on 
I mean, flatbed, they run us like crazy. Um, we're not the base division, but we do get a lot of loads, so we, they have no issue running us around and getting us miles and all that stuff. Me and my trainer averaged, God, we probably averaged seven or 8,000 miles a week. We ran like crazy. We never really friggin' stopped. Um, the way we did the schedule, we never had to take a 34 either. Um, so it worked out pretty well. Um, and then what part of Atlanta are you from? I live in Smyrna, Georgia. Um, I actually grew up, I spent, before this, I spent the last what was it, 13 or 14 years in Canton, Georgia, graduated from Cherokee High School. But I now live down in Smyrna, Georgia, um, not very far from the new Braves Stadium. Um, so yeah, I guess this was kind of a, uh, a Q&A video, even though I only answered two people's questions, which was three questions. Um, I'm going to get back to filming videos again, um, try to get them more comp more frequently now that I am on the, uh, now that I'm back on the road and I need something to do while I'm just sitting here, um, aside from watching TV and YouTube videos and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, if y'all have any questions, please send them over. I'm running out of things to talk about prime-wise without answering questions. Um, so I guess some of the videos are probably just going to become some of the random stuff that's going through my head. I don't know. I will make a video about some of the, uh, the issues I've had with the truck that have caused downtime and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, for those of y'all who are with Prime currently or think about coming to Prime, welcome to the Prime family. I hope to bump into y'all out here on the road. Um, for those of y'all that just watch this because you find me entertaining for some reason, awesome. Um, don't know if there's actually any of those out there, but yeah. But cool. Y'all have a great time. I will, um, I'll talk to y'all soon. Be safe out there.